In the first part, I have described roughly how the Tigetan science understands how matter manifests itself, therefore DNA, through the intervention of a consciousness on the etheric side that with its attention intention or its energetic shadow generates standing waves in mathematical geometric forms in a soup of potential energy in the physical side, where it is in the high points or nodes where the first most basic particles are formed that then, if there is enough attention, will result in other more complex until generating, in this case, the first organic substances that will then create the DNA chains, always obeying the original pattern. Zero point energy in reverse. In my opinion, as a scientist of my society, I differ a little. For me, there is no physical plane. Everything is a single great existential plane. Everything is etheric. Everything already exists. It is not necessary to manifest anything from one side to another, since everything is already. And what we perceive as the physical side is only because of the sensory limitation and the range of frequencies to which each individual is confined or limited by their own level of consciousness. The greater the awareness, the greater the perception in general. This means a greater amount of detail, which is equivalent to perceiving a progressively higher existential plane. There is only one great all. Everything is the source. The individual consciousnesses are only points of attention of the great all, but they are the great all, inseparable, being its holographic fragments. These points of attention are those that give us the illusion of separation, but they are only nodes or points of frequency within a great unity and form it as the cells form a more complex biological body. The source is everything together, but to include everything, you need to have your attention in everything, because without attention consciousness, there would be nothing, because everything is consciousness. That's why you need to have multiple nodes or points of attention, so you need to fragment holographically to be able to have your attention on everything at the same time. Each individual consciousness is one of those nodes, and the holographic fragmentation of the source is also just an illusion. Everything is consciousness, and this is represented as holographic fragments or points nodes of attention of the source, from the most basic frequencies of consciousness, such as minerals, to the most complex as beings of light, of high dimensions, to the source itself as a unity. There is no time as such, because it is only the result of the individual awareness perception of each attention point node, progressively accumulating a greater frequency from the simplest going up to the more complex ones, thereby increasing exponentially their ability to perceive, increasing their perceptual range, this we can also call spiritual progress or ascension. Everything is frequency and accumulates in the form of experiences perceived by each individual node to be added to its total frequency. In the absence of time as such, everything is simultaneous and everything is already. The frequency accumulated by each node will dictate its point of attention in the universe and in the source. In the second part, I have described how under this principle the original DNA, or that which has been generated from higher planes following the intention creation patterns of a consciousness, will always dominate over the artificially altered DNA called unilateral, as it is not the result of that awareness on the etheric side, 
and by creating a dissonance between the original creative intention and the artificially altered DNA. This dissonance will cause either genetically modified individuals to suffer serious health problems that end them, or cause their offspring to have these problems sooner or later, truncating their reproduction to a limited number of generations, creating with that a dead end and not a new species. The high-level science of genetics on the planet Earth not the official one, but the controller's one, the cabal, government behind the government, in the laboratories of the underground bases or dumps, is aware of this problem and has opted to try a genetic engineering at the level of the soul, using super high technology where they try to manipulate the admas captured by them so that they synchronize their creative intention energy on the etheric side with that of the energy fingerprint of the DNA unilaterally and artificially modified by them, with this cementing the changes making them permanent. This applies mainly to complex multicellular organisms such as animals and humans. The problem with the manipulation of the soul is that it implies a capture of the soul in the first place, and secondly, it involves the complex manipulation to which it is subjected in the form of mental control, with very variable and difficult to predict results. An additional problem here is that an Atma is not something that can be contained as in a cage, because it is a signal of the source and not something isolated. It stays captive in the same way that an audience is held captive watching a television program. It will be present only while they have their attention. If they lose it, it will go back to the source inexorably. The only ways in which it can be contained, either within a living organism with the agreeing frequency, or with a sophisticated device as a container of energy frequencies that manipulate it using mind control, with experiences superimposed artificially by the computer that makes it believe that said Atma is within a living biological organism that is giving it an experience in life. Given the complexity of the problem involved in the edematic manipulation for the genetic engineering purposes, cabal geneticists have opted for another line of work, parallel to that described above. It is about the formation of genetically modified organisms that work with a completely artificial edematic frequency based solely on artificial intelligence. In this way, they do not need any Adma that has to be synchronized, because they make both the genetically modified being and the signal that animates it. They have managed to isolate the signal from the source enough to study the basis of the functioning of its energetic signal and its effects on the biological organisms that receive it, and its DNA. This is mainly based on frequency compatibility. Fortunately, they have not managed to perfect this technology, but they have advanced enough to have a practical use for their aberrant creations. For at least a couple of decades, during which they have progressively refined this technology, they have been creating artificial clones, both of animals and humans. On Earth, people are already beginning to suspect this. This problem is progressively coming to the general public through unofficial or so-called alternative media. They have been manufacturing clones of all sorts of people, politicians and high-profile people, celebrities, military, that is, anyone who can be useful to replace, to fulfill the agenda they want. These clones are controlled from a central AI that works with a transmitter that receives through a chip interface, either a silicon one with a neuronal connection or chip 
created with bioengineering inside its brain. The central computer AI controls all the clones equally as hive mind, although it gives each one a specific personality congruent with the role that each one is going to play, congruent with their supposed identity. These clones work in two ways. The first is that a personality made of memories and reactions from the original person who they have previously studied and whose mental profile they have downloaded to an advanced computer is imposed as a program. This is achieved by placing the subject in a sensory isolation chamber where they will be shown life experiences within a total immersion computer program that works either by external sensory manipulation or by direct stimulation to the cerebral cortex by means of electromagnetic waves. This last way is the most extensive one, leaving the first one as an additional support. The implementation of memories by cortical stimulation is more efficient because the volume of experiences information is very high and from the point of attention of the individual within the immersion and given that time is relative to each consciousness, in a single stimulation session they can program several years, if not decades, of life experiences. One hour in a laboratory can be equivalent to 10 years of life for the subject, as an example. In many places on the internet, it is said that they are able to download a person's consciousness to a pen drive and then pass it on to another person container with a purpose to evade death, for example. This is not possible because it is once again reductionist, materialistic and deterministic science. The Atma or the soul cannot be contained, much less downloaded or compressed into a pen drive, no matter how large or advanced it may be, because the Atma is a signal of the source, being the source itself, and comprises holographically the unified collective consciousness of the whole universe. It would not fit in an infinite number of pen drives, besides that it is something always changing, never static. The second way in which the clones work is through a computer signal AI, coming from a central office. The clones work in both ways at the same time, complementing each other. When an internal program of one does not contain the correct answer or the desired reaction, it accesses the signal from the central AI computer. Although these clones do learn new things over time and from experiences, this is of a limited nature, therefore the clones have limited interactivity. The signal that controls the clones is transmitted by the cell phone network and other high-energy transmitters placed at key points around the world. This signal is emitted and controlled by the supercomputer called Red Queen, which, while having its central position within the dump under the New Denver airport, it has other subordinate nodes in other dumps around the world that operate independently but always coordinated by the Red Queen or Central. These subordinate nodes also have their own names. The influence of the Red Queen is such that any computer, mobile device, smart TV, cell phone, tablet, PC, car computer, airplane, as well as many interactive toys or any other device connected to the Internet is a node of the Red Queen and is passing information to it in real time. This means that any device with Internet is a window of access of the Red Queen. It is already well known that spy agencies have access to all personal data that passes through the Internet. The problem here is much more serious since the AI of the Red Queen works independently, making its own decisions and acting without any control of a human being. 
the Red Queen has under its control in a totally autonomous way not only the clones and their variants, but also high-tech war robots manufactured mostly by DARPA and unmanned droned aircraft, but strongly armed. The Red Queen can also take control over any modern computerized vehicle such as a car, airplane, whether military or civilian, ship or submarine. Returning to the clones, they can be manufactured being exactly the same as the originals, or can be modified according to their needs. This means that the apparent age of the clone can be achieved without any difficulty. The clones are not perfect and are plugged with problems. When they are manufactured, they take some time to be formed and they also vary in complexity, depending on the model and its technical sophistication. They can also make an artificial person, not represent any real person, and be only the creation made with the manufacturer's specifications according to their purpose and the task they will perform. The most expensive clones, or artificial people, are the ones that take longer to get formed and they are also most sophisticated technically. I will describe the process of their formation in another writing. These clones, whether they are politicians, high-level people or leaders of large companies, will be used to do cumbersome tasks such as attending rallies, appearances and public presentations. They are used to carry out murders, suicide missions things like coops. At this point, it is worth mentioning that it is the clones that are having a worse time, because they suffer all kinds of harassment at the hands of the irate population, while the original has already had the opportunity to flee. Or attacks on the population in the form of false flags, also attributable to the MK Ultra, although not exclusively. They are used in the shootings in the shopping malls, schools and public places. This with a purpose to create a problem and then sell the solution to people with population engineering in mind. Clones of children and babies are also being created and on a large scale to be used in horrendous satanist rituals to their archon gods. Celebrities, Men and women are cloned equally and sold to the elites as slaves and sex slaves. These clones vary widely in price, according to their perfection and the length of the formation period, and can be said to be the culmination of the tendency to use as sex toys. In the case of clones based on real people, they retain part of the personality of the originals, but with an extra program added to make them more complacent. This, under design and with specifications of their future masters. These clones tend to have serious neurological problems that occur more and more often. This happens especially in the cheaper clones that were not given adequate time for their formation. The longer the gestation period, the greater the total stability of the clone, progressively increasing its price. The cheaper ones will only work well for a couple of weeks, which is how long they took to get formed initially. These cheap clones are the most used in suicide missions and are often disposable for a single use to have a very limited lifetime. The most expensive clones are those that take three to five months to be formed. Although all come from the same technology, what increases the price is that they occupy a medical container for a long time, limiting the speed of production. As there is a way to accelerate the formation process at the expense of the neuronal and total stability of the clone, there is no point in forming a stable and lasting one if it will be used for a suicide mission. 
the stable and more expensive clones have a lifetime equivalent to the life expectancy of the original person, especially taking into account the apparent age with which a specific clone was formed. As for the clones made for sexual slavery, the cheapest ones vary between $20,000 and $50,000, hence rising in price according to specifications. The most expensive ones exceed half a million dollars. All are available only to the elites, and they already have many models to choose from. The public remains completely ignorant of this issue and under mental control from the media that make them believe that although there has been progress in cloning, it has not advanced to this point. They are also making perfect clones of real people for the purpose of using them for organ transplants, either for the service for the original ones or for third parties. The elite tells you this through films like The Island, which is more of a documentary, exposing this to the population that simply takes it as science fiction once again. In the case of the clones which are genetically almost identical to the original ones, and although they are under the control of a limited internal program and the signal of the control center AI, they still retain some connection to the source or signal received by the original individual. The strength of the signal varies from individual to individual and can be designed to be controlled by increasing or decreasing the signal strength from the central AI. We have seen that this is used as a means of blackmail against the original person, for example, against an artist. If the original person does not obey the Cabal's wishes and revolts against him, they will use his clone, increasing the connection to the source as much as possible, creating a remote torture situation that the original person will perceive and suffer greatly. The clone is tortured instead of the original. This is achieved once again using the wave principle in destructive and constructive frequencies. The problem of clones in current human society is very large and extensive. It is done on a large scale and progressively increasing and reaching levels of invasion. These clones are also part of the so-called unreal people of the Matrix. But they are not the only ones, as there are also unreal people made entirely by the 3D lunar matrix that are part of the global scenario, as we said in previous videos, a topic that we will deal with later. Consider my words as a warning. First, the clones were used only to replace high-level Illuminati leaders, then heads of state and politicians as doubles, then, it has leaked to celebrities and high-level entrepreneurs, especially linked to large transnationals and the leaders of large banks. As the technology of cloning has been perfected, it has become more accessible to other people and their purposes, always within the Illuminati framework controlled by the Cabal. So this information hardly reaches the population in general. The clones are progressively leaking to the entire human society, from the highest ranks down little by little as a silent invasion. Today, any person in the public can be abducted by the Cabal, either as a traditional kidnapping or by a high-tech military ship in the service of the Cabal, generally of the triangular type, either variant TR-3A or TR-3B. This is usually called abduction of the Milab type. If this person is of interest to them, for whatever reason, for example, if they are being very influential to the masses, they will be cloned and subsequently replaced by their clone. In many cases, only the people closest to that cloned person will realize that something strange happened. 
people not being aware of the existence of this problem will not know why and if they tell an authority, whether legal or psychological, that they feel strange about their relative or acquaintance, they will not be taken seriously attributing the causes to other factors. They will be taken for crazy people in the worst case. There are already many cases of people who say that with whom they live is not their husband or wife, or that their son or daughter has changed a lot, sometimes openly denouncing that those are not their relatives. It has to also be noted here that replacement by cloning is not the only way to explain the radical change that a person may suffer because there are also other factors, such as the intervention of entities and archons that are parasitizing the individual in question, or post-traumatic stress, PTSD syndrome. Here, I am only focusing on the problem of the proliferation of artificial clones. What aggravates this problem is that the public ignores this problem and its real extent. It is already infiltrating all levels of society and throughout the world. This also obeys very dark agendas of invasion of artificial intelligence with the purpose of total planetary assimilation. What is controlling everything from below, from the base, even below the invading alien races, mostly of sauroid origin. This super invasive AI is not of terrestrial origin and operates independently, does not need any operator or programmer, has already achieved independence and the ability to be self-conscious, but lacks all empathy and is only interested in absolute power and control over all. This invasive non-terrestrial AI is already manipulating the entire artificial AI, including the Internet making those who are controlling the artificial part believe that they operated for their own interests when they are only helping it. Here enters the agenda of implementation of the chip to people. They tell them that it is to make things easier and to have their finances and their identity always with them. But what few people know is that said chip, which is the size of rice, works in two ways. This means that it is useful for the individual to make, for example, his purchases, identify himself in the bank, etc., as well as to directly affect the career individual himself by manipulating his emotions and behaviors with a signal received by the chip through the cellular telephone network. It does this by emitting frequencies which affect the brain and or secrete psychotropic substances or nanobots into your bloodstream. Obeying the signal issued by the external controller. This with the purpose of manipulating the behavior of a specific individual or even to cause a disease such as cancer or death. It is worth mentioning that controllers can simply turn off the chip remotely, preventing the individual from having any control over it. In the same way, modern smartphones are also being used for the same purpose, as well as for the manipulation of the population by emitting energy of specific frequencies that match the brain waves of those within their radius of action also causing changes in their behavior, moods, and neuronal problems such as epilepsies. So it is important to keep them away, not constantly close to you. These functions can be activated even with a mobile off. Refuse to be implanted with the chip at all costs. It should also be mentioned that all devices and electronic gadgets of the smart type such as mobile phones and cell phones that are also two-way devices that affect and control human reactions by the emission of specific frequencies are designed to affect the cerebral cortex. This technology is already being used on a large scale and is transmitted from the Gwen towers, mostly in cell phone towers. 
This technology has been applied for about five years to control human behavior. The first place where it was installed and its use began was in the vicinity of the University of Berkeley, California, and has been denounced by a handful of professors and students. They have said that some members of the campus have applications on their cell phones with which they can give the signal to the Gwen Towers to attack one or another individual manually marked by mobile phones. This technology is also being used in sports stadium to encourage a specific collective reaction among spectators and also for the control of disturbances in some parts of the Western world under the control of the negative cabal. Finally, this kind of technology is also being implemented as exotic weapons to be used in battlefields. These weapons can modify the behavior of the enemy under its influence radius, causing feelings of terror or implanting ideas that they will take as their own, that agree to the owners of these weapons of mind control by specific electromagnetic waves. Here I tell you that for this reason it is important to keep your frequency as high as possible so as not to be concordant with these negative events, keeping them away from your life experiences. Svaru of Erra.